told by people who know about these things to be in Dublin, where you would imagine there would be an audience for poetry, they're averaging between six and eight. Some of you may remember, um, roughly 10 years ago, there was the arrest in England of a little old lady, highly respectable, who was known for standing outside a cottage and pruning her roses. She was in her late 80s at the time, and uh, she was a dyed in wool English woman, sort of a Miss Marble figure. Until it was revealed that she had been one of the major contacts who all through the Cold War and from the 40s had run the spies, Guy Burgess, Donald McLean, Anthony Blunt, and uh, who's left? Oh, Philby. Philby, and then of course the fifth man, uh, Karen Cross, who was living in France. And this little old woman who lived in this village, nobody knew anything about her except that she was on the roses, and apparently run them all, that's so we get spies. So there you are, you're sitting beside me. <laughs> um, it has, the, the whole thing of the, the spying world and the secret world has changed, because now, of course, as you probably know, uh, the secret services in Britain actually put ads in the local papers looking for people to join. But in those days, in the days of Phil B and uh, you were expected to be from a certain class. It was completely class-based. Your education was irrelevant. Uh, the secretaries, the young girls who were hired during the war to work, work for example, in MI6, during their interview were asked, do you have a title? And that was the requirement for admission. Obviously, Cambridge and Oxford, and uh, before all this, I never mentioned Harold, but you had to be public school. And you had, in some way or other, to be linked with the sort of upper middle class, uh, of the, uh, small beer aristocracy, which is why, of course, Philby and the rest were never actually uncovered, and why, when they were, there were denials in the House of Commons of being spies. It was unthinkable that people of such background could be spied. It's just unthinkable. <coughs> they don't do that sort of thing. No, we know they do. So this is a poem called Spy Story. My job, most of the time, was to report things that weren't there, create files that were always empty, and photograph young lovers fucking in a park. It's all done by fat arsed computer people these days, nonetheless a lie, but without the risk. And the drinkers tedium, though out of the rain. It rained in Danzig, as was, and in Berlin. We drowned in doorways in the dark, dried out in cellars under silly names but it was full with an edge. My name was Mackerel. Someone else was Shoal. He handled drops, lines on rough copy book pages, such as grandfather is in the library. Alcoholic schoolboys, most of us, retired on pensions, sometimes called in to verify or lie about some half-truth or other in secret, naturally. You won't have heard of Budgerigar, a sanctified typist who went over, or the lovely maestro whom I took to bed once and loved to a degree. It all happened long ago, the cafe where I met Medallion for coffee and he handed me the date for the Soviet mauling of Hungary is demolished now, a block of flats. I slipped him a grubby file full of misdirections and made up contacts, and they shot him quietly in Leipzig. Memoirs? No. 
out of the question. There are many questions to be out of, and nothing's like it was. It wasn't back then either. 